scriptures talk about a blessedness that happens to a man whose delight is in the law of God. So as someone says, it says, but his delight is in the law of God. And doth he meditate day and night. He says that that man is like a tree planted by the rivers of water, whose leaves do not wither, when he bears fruit in every season. As you are about listening to this message, we believe that your life is going to be like that man planted by the rivers of water. Your leaves are forever going to bear. And we know that your, your season will not pass by. You will forever shine and you will forever bear fruit. We have a lot of content to share with you. So we would entreat you to subscribe to this channel as well as like us. Hit that notification bell to receive more updates from us because we know that whatever content here is going to set you on calls at every time. It's going to make you attain whatever stature that Christ wants you to attain. Thank you. There are many people today whose lives have been destroyed because of the imbalance and the inaccurate communication of the prophetic. Sincere people have been called demons are we together now because of the prophetic listen very carefully there are many people who were doing businesses that were correct but the prophetic just came and said look at this look at this look at that and there are people who did were not supposed to stop their jobs but maybe you see somebody working in an oil and gas company and God opens your eyes and you just see an estate it may tell you that in the future he will be doing real estate or in addition he should do real estate or God is going to beautify his life the way you are in the similitude of the house that you saw now it's up to you to use scripture and interpret you can just say oh God, you better leave this job now God is not in it and the man will leave a job paying one million per month and waiting to do real estate the first real estate he did was with a 419 person and one billion just went down and he comes to you and say prophet and you say I know what I saw you didn't lie but your interpretation was false please hear me if you are called into the prophetic here or through the health of your prayer life God has been tilting you towards the prophetic please stay with the Word of God and learn wisdom so that you do not mislead people if I were called as a man of God to interpret Pharaoh's dream, Egypt would die of hunger based on what I will say. Are we together? Because the first thing I'm going to go to most likely is witchcraft. By the time you see seven lean cows, eat seven fat ones and don't increase. What else? Is that not witchcraft? I will just say, Pharaoh, I don't know where you are coming from. But let me tell you, don't take for granted that you are the Pharaoh. Something is wrong with you. Your life is about to be cut short. But here is a man who had correct perception and correct interpretation. He said both the cows, the fat cows, the lean cows, the fat ears, the unproductive, they all mean time. How does that relate to time? That's what the Spirit of God can do. Listen. I'm teaching tonight, I'm hoping God is correcting someone because there are many visions right now on your table full of false interpretations you have added to them. There are many people who should not start ministry but just because you saw a man holding a mic, holding a mic does not mean he's called into ministry. It can mean many things. Listen carefully. You saw yourself naked in the spirit. It does not always mean witchcraft. Who told you nakedness always means witchcraft? Nakedness can mean intimacy. I saw a chain. You must be a witch. Who told you? The chain of gold can be. Was it not a chain that was put on Joseph when he was honored? Don't just interpret things wrongly because of what you saw. Five people can see chains and it means five different things. Hallelujah. A man can see his wife after four children, you have vowed that you won't give birth again. And then suddenly you will see your wife in a vision while you are praying, pregnant with twins. It does not mean to have more children. You have to pray for the interpretation. You see that now? 
Please shout amen. amen. Because I need to say this because many believers in the body of Christ claiming maturity without stability of scripture, you will confuse yourself and then even others. I'm not, you know that when I teach like this, I'm not being sarcastic. God is helping us to gain understanding. I'm going to show you now the rules of engagement and then we'll wrap up with it. But it is important. Do not assume that what you saw is what it is. Allow the intelligence of the scripture and the wisdom of the Holy Spirit to be the compass that helps your interpretation. Hallelujah. There are people who do everything they see in the spirit. You saw yourself smacking your wife. That could mean that God is telling you that you are not mentoring her. That she's a child in the spirit. And the Bible says foolishness is bound in the heart of a child. But the rod of correction will drive it far from him. It only means introduce mentorship, not just love. But you can go physically and say, Madam, if you are Goliath, I am David. I will kill you in this house. Who is like him, lion and the lamb, seated on the throne? Listen, if you were John who was caught up in the Isle of Patmos or Ezekiel, and you suddenly have a vision and you see a lion, you see an eagle, you see a man, and then you see what again? A calf. The first thing you will do is bind that vision and say this thing cannot be in the throne room. This is demons. This, this, this is witchcraft. What is the face of an eagle doing before God? What is the face of a man? I'm seeing four faces. This must be a cause. This is, this is ancestry. And you will be binding it and casting it. Whereas they represent four dimensions that show the holistic spiritual growth of a man. The lion stands for kingship, dominion. The calf stands for servanthood. The man stands for your humanity. And the eagle stands for your divinity. God may be showing you something else and you are casting it through ignorance. You may sincerely go to bed and God shows you a gentleman or shows you a woman. That does not mean marriage. Who told you that just because you, you, you can even see the person in a wedding gown in a vision. It does not mean marriage. It can mean honor. It can mean restoration. It can mean intimacy. Listen, I'm preaching from my heart because if the body of Christ does not understand the power of interpretation, many correct things we see and hear will mislead us. Are we together? By reason of what I do, I get text messages from people. And you know, sometimes people will send me text messages and say, Apostle, my mother is a witch. I want you to agree with me that anybody and any... How do you just assume mama is a witch and you are 30 years old, she did not kill you? Simply because you had a dream and you saw her frowning. What does that mean? Does frowning means she does not want my progress? What does that, where did you get that from? How many innocent people today are going through pains? There are spouses that never talk because someone saw something. There are businessmen that just cut business ties and they say, what happened? You say, I went to bed and I got up and I just saw blood dripping. My brother, what does that mean? Blood dripping does not necessarily mean witchcraft. That may mean that this phase of business will demand sacrifice. So go through it with honor. Stop thinking profit and just press. You can't just assume that because you saw blood dripping, it is witchcraft. Please lay your hands on your head and say, Lord, correct every wrong interpretation. Correct it. Correct it. Someone pray. Those following online pray. If there is any vision, any dream, any prophetic manifestation, confusing my life confusing my destiny i cry unto the god of heaven give me accurate interpretation of the happenings around my life by this time tomorrow in the name of jesus in the name of Jesus, 
rules of engagement pay attention now as we wrap up I want to show you rules of engagement means how to make the prophecy from scripture work for you and how to make the prophecy that comes through human vessels I hope you know just because I'm showing you flaws here and there with human vessels does not mean that the prophetic that comes through men is wrong God still uses men even now are we together rules of engagement apostle how do I make the prophetic from scripture let's start with scripture how do I make the prophetic from scripture work for me I want to be able to take the truths of scripture and make it happen create possibilities in my life let me give you a few rules of engagement let's start with the prophecy of scripture number one you must access the prophetic blessing of scripture by locating scriptural promises that relate to your area of concern it's a long sentence i'll break it down for you you must access the prophetic blessing of scripture you must access the prophetic blessing of scripture by locating scriptural promises that relate to your area of concern by locating scriptural promises these are the rules of engagement now you want to make the word of god as a prophetic platform to work for you rule number one is that you must find from scripture you must pay the price to locate where god has said what concerning you in luke chapter 4 and verse 17 you must access the prophetic blessing of scripture by locating scriptural promises that relates to your area of concern Luke 4 17 the Bible says and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah and the Bible says when he had opened the book please say open the book one more time say open the book prophesy to yourself say open the book when he had opened the book sometimes it is not in walking around that you find sometimes it is not traveling from place to place that you find finding comes when you open the book when he had opened the book he found the place where it was written the word of god will never profit you until you find where it is written have you found where it was written concerning your health it is written have you found where it is written concerning your safety can i tell you do not trust any confidence you have if you cannot support it with scripture what makes you believe that your children are going to be great i train them well you are joking go back to scripture the bible says blessed is the man that feareth the lord that delighted greatly in his command he said his seed shall be mighty upon earth and the generation of the upright shall be blessed this is the basis of my confidence if you believe that even if your child goes from pillar to post find rest this word you believe will draw him one day that child will come for koinonia and as soon as he's sitting, he comes late for miracle service, he is barely sitting when the power of God will carry him. And as he lands like Paul, you will hear a voice, Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Listen, believers, we activate the prophetic dimension of scripture by first locating where it is written. Everything about your life has a parallel that is written somebody shout it is written one more time let the devil hear you say it is written so the next time you say apostle i don't know what is happening around my life it is difficult for the word of god to help you with that kind of confusion what is the area jesus will meet people and say what should i do for you what do you want the word of god to do apostle i've been trusting god for the fruit of the womb and it looks like the doctor said this and that and that and that I know if I meet you, before you meet me, meet the word. Find three or four scripture because in the mouth of two or three, a matter is established. Find two, or, I'm showing you how to, to be a profitable believer. Find two or three scriptures that talk about your fruitfulness. Are we together now? Yes. So that is the first key. Man of God, what makes you believe ministry will prosper? People like me. The first conference I held, I saw several people. You don't know the heart of man. Hallelujah. 
<laughs> people like anything that starts for the first time it takes the word to keep it going so number one you access the prophetic blessing by locating scriptural promises i hope you are not confused i'm showing you how to engage the prophecy of scripture now we are going to come to human vessels number two declare them boldly that's the second rule of engagement how do i make the prophecy of scripture work for me number one find where it is written from scripture and number two declare it boldly psalm 107 verse 2 psalm 107 verse 2 let the redeemed of the lord say so simple let the redeemed of the lord say so can i tell you bold declarations of faith is part of the ways that we activate the prophetic dimension of scripture ah in the name of jesus there shall be no loss the bible says the path of the just shines brighter and brighter and you now personalize it and put your name in the name of jesus i declare i do not have a better yesterday my future will always be better than yesterday i declare by the power of the word let the redeemed of the lord say so numbers 14 28 very quickly numbers 14 28 numbers 14 28 declare them boldly say unto them as truly as i live saith the lord as ye have spoken in my ears so will i do for you as ye have spoken not as you want to happen as you have spoken since all you were saying is there is nothing about us this family we will not rise you do not know that you have been prophesying negative things so will i do unto you one last scripture for that point hebrews chapter 10 and verse 23 the bible says to hold fast 10 23 let us hold fast the profession of our faith the profession without wavering for he is faithful that promised what has he told you he said hold it fast through your profession of faith told you primarily through scripture apostle now that you have spoken i don't even trust my vision so keep the vision aside and focus on the scripture that has been proven while you fine-tune your vision you can be sure that you will not go wrong with scripture is god helping someone so number one access the scriptural promises in the area of concern number two declare them boldly number three write please quickly obediently fulfill the conditions tied to their manifestation obediently fulfill the conditions that are tied to their manifestation obediently fulfill the conditions that are tied to the manifestation of that promise don't assume that because you spoke it will happen every promise of scripture has a participatory condition to activate the prophetic power that resides within it and let me tell you the truth the prophetic power that is resident in scripture will only be manifest at the instance of your obedience obediently fulfill the conditions tied to their manifestations deuteronomy chapter 28 1 and 2 popular scripture it shall come to pass 28 1 and 2 that if thou shalt diligently hearken to the voice of the lord thy god to observe and to do notice to observe and to do all his commandments which i command you this day that the lord your god will set thee on high above all the nations of the earth verse 2 it says and these blessings shall come on thee at the instance of your obedience and overtake thee if thou will hearken to the voice of the lord thy god isaiah 1 19 and 20 please give it to us isaiah 1 19 and 20 we're looking at the third rule of engagement that turns the prophecy of scripture to profit you if ye be willing and obedient willingness is not enough obedient ye shall eat the good of the land verse 20 it says but if ye refuse and rebel ye shall be devoured with the sword for the mouth of the lord has spoken it so you want the prophecy of scripture to work for you 
Number one, locate. Locate from scripture. Listen, every time Koinonia learn this, let this be a modus operandi for your managing challenges and turning negative things into victory. The moment you are in any negative situation, please minimize lamentation. Go straight to scripture. What has the word of God said concerning this condition? Your life still remains at a risk until you find at least two or three scriptures. As simple as this is, there are people who have felt too proud to follow the simplicity of this protocol now to their detriment. You ask me what is the basis for your confidence in this ministry? I'm not just going to say because the leaders love me or because I love them. As wonderful as these things are, I will show you scriptures that represent the basis. Man of God, what is the basis of your confidence for continuity in ministry? What makes you believe that this Christmas, Koinonia, what makes you think that you will come back next year here? God forbid I will not die. I agree. What is your basis? Ask the devil now. Don't tell me ask the devil. What is the basis of your confidence? Bold face is only a recipe for disaster. Surround yourself with scripture. And then number two, declare it boldly. Any truth you find and you are ashamed to declare. You don't have to declare before people. You are declaring to the realm of the spirit because the Bible says, declare ye that thou mightest be justified. Wisdom demands that it's not everything you say in the presence of men because of the heart of men. But as far as the protocol of confession is concerned, you can lock your door and begin to speak. In the name of Jesus, I decree and declare, I may be a tenant right now in one room, but I prophesy by the power of the Holy Spirit that I will feed nations. In the lifetime of my loved ones, I will build for them. I will build churches for Jesus Christ. I may be a man of God right now who is suffering epileptic in my revelation but in the name of Jesus I am gaining stability spiritually. I will communicate doctrine with precision and power. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. And then number three to obediently fulfill the conditions tied to their manifestation. Ladies and gentlemen, please hear me. This is where many believers are bought the journey to making the Bible release its prophetic potential over their lives. Most people have found what God has said about them, but to now engage, to now engage, as you will be learning, the prophet spoke over Samaria. He said, by this time, tomorrow, this would happen. And he went. Do you know the morrow would have come and another morrow, another morrow, and nothing will happen? The Bible says there were four lepers. Is that true? And those lepers began to speak to themselves. Because you see, the signs follow. The signs don't go before. If you cannot take a bold step of faith, the signs cannot follow. And the leper said, listen, we are lepers. Why sit we here till we die? Let us go and fall into the hands of our enemies. If they spare us, that is fine. If they don't spare us, we perish. Are we together now? Sounds like what Esther did. Declare fast. I will go even though not invited. If I perish, I perish. None of them perished. Hallelujah. And the Bible says, as they got up and they began to move, according to the prophetic word of the prophet, the Bible says, the Lord made their enemies to hear a sound of chariots. And they say, ah, the king of Israel has gone to get into alliance with other kings and they are now coming to destroy us. The Bible says they got up in the morning and they ran. By the time the lepers got there, all they saw was food and gold. The Bible says they entered from house to house and they ate free of charge. They had to a point that they said, listen, we are not that evil. No matter how we want to exhaust this, we can't finish it. This is a lesson. Every time God brings you into the wealthy place, if you think about yourself alone, you will die. They said it there. Because you are alone there, there is no, that, those vast resources. Will you carry so much gold alone and be moving on the street and someone sees you? Wouldn't he kill you? There is safety in sharing. It's not only blessing, there is safety in sharing. And they said, no, 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 no. Let's go back to our people and bring them. Can you imagine blessings that can feed a nation? 
will four people be able to only wicked people carry resources for a nation and consume it by themselves does that sound like what happens in Africa only very wicked people now that everybody prayed everybody suffered prophecy now came and then a few people just said now that we have found it let's just stay here and eat it hallelujah let me give you the last key we're about to pray what is the last key remain steadfast giving thanks remain steadfast comma giving thanks remain steadfast giving thanks this is the fourth key we're discussing rules of engagement now how to release the prophetic potential that is locked up in the word of god number one locate scriptures that address the issue of concern number two that you declare boldly as a law you are not declaring because you are a noisemaker it is a law in the spirit the law of manifestation demands that it is only what is spoken that manifests number three that you obediently fulfill the conditions that are tied therein for instance if you are praying and trusting God for wealth and prosperity and you are not a giver you are not faithful in your tithing you are not faithful in giving are we together you are not faithful in taking advantage of your mind to have it transformed you are not faithful in being valuable to be able to pro to you know to, to 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 be productive to be fruitful you are already no matter what you confess at best you will just have trickles of favor dripping down like dew but you want sustainable blessings you must find out the conditions that connect to it the bible says he that wants friends the condition is that you must show yourself friendly so if you are a selfish person who is all about you you will find out that you will never have friends you will go from pillar to post saying this lady does not like me this man does not like me but the problem sometimes you can even say even my husband too does not like me before you now judge them find out are you friendly as simple as that apostle destiny helpers have not come to my life being a, receiving from destiny helpers is a harvest who have you become a destiny helper to nobody you can clap some of you want to clap please clap because that is a revelation for you it is amazing how many people will not give many things they want given to them are we together now please listen I'm trusting God for a destiny helper. I'm trusting God for someone to give me a job. I'm trusting God for someone to sow 1 million, 10 million. Believers even have the audacity. Faith is not foolishness. You ask them, what are you trusting God for? Say, I'm, at least I will manage 100 million. And you look at the person and say, what are you saying? And yet that person's mother or father is crying in the village. And the 2 million that you have, even 10,000, you cannot take from it. God is not a fool. You will reap what you sow, not what you want. Nobody reaps what they want. They reap what they sow. So make sure that what you want becomes what you are sowing. Hallelujah. Romans 4.20. Romans 4.20. Romans chapter 4, speaking of Abraham, he staggered not at the promise of God through unbelief. The Bible says, but he was strong in faith, giving glory to God. Please look at me. It is an act of faith to thank God, steadfastly waiting and celebrate the manifestation of the word of God in your life. There are many believers that carry an atmosphere of gloominess and sadness. And they say, what is wrong? You say, Apostle, me, I don't know. God promised me that my family will be smiling by December. Now, this is December, whatever. A few more days. Is it that God is not? I don't, this God self. If not because I was, I came from a Christian family. I will write a book that God is not faithful. And that person is still expecting the word to work. No. No. You must learn to give God thanks. Even when you do not see things happen. I'm still trusting God to change my husband. I'm still trusting God to change my wife. I'm still trusting God to open up those doors financially. I've engaged everything and it has not yet happened. Can I tell you, I want you to recalibrate your understanding so that every time you see 
your life make sure that all your eyes see is what god is doing not what the devil is doing you can see what god is doing and say lord i thank you you are faithful you are faithful you are mighty now how do you access the prophetic from vessels this will be our last part and then we'll pray have you been blessed so far the rules of engagement how do you access the prophetic from a man of God a prophet now that I've taught you how to access the prophetic and to release the prophetic from scripture I will round up this teaching by teaching you how to access the prophetic from vessels three requirements every time you are in need of provoking and accessing the prophetic from a man of God a vessel there are three requirements are you ready number one discernment discernment that is the first key you cannot receive from a man of God you cannot receive from an anointed vessel when you do not discern what they represent in John chapter 4 and verse 19 Jesus was with a woman who was a harlot at the well the Bible was the Bible talks about Jesus discussing with her and as Jesus began to speak the woman was just he was doing something to her perception and by the time we get to verse 19 the Bible says the woman said unto him sir I perceive that thou art a prophet you started as a stranger maybe somebody who will be my seventh husband when I saw you I thought you are like the five the six there and so I was preparing myself to hear what you have to say but in the midst of the discussion I've seen that this one you came to rescue me not to marry me I perceive that you are a prophet are we together in 2 Kings chapter 4, 8 and 9, 2 Kings chapter 4, 8 and 9, the Bible talks about the woman in Shunem, the Shunammite woman we call her, and it fell on a day that Elisha passed to Shunem, and there was a great woman, and the Bible says she constrained him to eat bread, and so it was that as oft as he passed by, he turned in tether to eat bread verse 9 and she and she said to her husband behold now i perceive that this is an holy man of god which passed by us continually discernment discernment do you know why you need to discern because men are men but you must be able to discern the grace that works in their lives above and beyond their humanity. You may be married to your wife and then God has granted her grace to be prophetic. That there is a grace from her. If you can look beyond her being just your wife, there is something God can use her to bring to your life. Familiarity has destroyed many people from receiving the prophetic from vessels. Number two honor honor this is a house of honor this is not new to you honor when you read the same second kings chapter 4 from verse 10 to 13 second kings 4 10 to 13 having discerned that is a holy man of god and a prophet of god she did not stop there she made a proposal to her husband let us make a little chamber i pray thee on the wall and let set for him there a bed and a table and a stool and a candlestick and it shall be wherever he comes to us he shall turn in hither 11. He says and it fell on a day that he came and he turned to the chamber and he lay there they did this continually verse 12 and he said to Gehazi now this always happens every time honor I have taught you that honor is the key to access this woman did not even make any request she just honored the man having perceived that he was a man of God and the prophet said no it's against the law of honor that this family keeps showing me honor without something coming from me to them he called on Gehazi his servant he said call the Shunammite woman and when they had called her she stood before him 13 he said she said unto him he said unto him say now unto her behold thou hast been careful for us with all this care what is to be done for thee 
would you want me to speak to the king or to the captain of the host and she said i dwell among my own people and if you read onwards you will see that gehazi now told elisha that i notice as wealthy as this family is there is a bot in this family they have not enjoyed the miracle of fruitfulness and he said that's right you will never see the woman asking for a child the woman did not ask for a child. She only honored a prophetic vessel and the prophet said, no, I must search what is not working in your life. And the prophet on his own, he said, by this time, accord, no, 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 according to the time of life, you shall embrace a son. And it happened as the prophet prophesied. There are many things, let me tell you, you will not need to ask men and women of God to pray for you for if you understand discernment and honor. Now, I know that, again, I always like to balance teachings like this because many times when we men of God find teachings like this, we press it into people. Don't come and meet a man of God empty-handed. It is scriptural, but it is not a burden. It should be by revelation and delight. Knowing that you see joy uh, and honor are principles that release the prophetic from the bowels of the spirit but it is not by manipulation i've been surprised at times where people want to see me and they're afraid and saying okay we we couldn't see you because there's nothing in our hand i said what is what's the meaning of that no honor is not just about giving things it's holding somebody in high esteem as touching what god has done it is good to honor people as much as God has blessed you, vessels of, of glory, but not to put yourself under, um, uh, under duress. And I, I, no man of God who loves God and is a man of integrity and serious with this work will tell you if you don't have something, you cannot come to me. No, freely we have received. The Bible says freely to give. Are we together? So discernment and then honor. In 1 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 6 to 8. 1 Samuel chapter 9 from verse 6 to 8. This was Saul. They were going to look for their donkey, remember? And then the Bible says, Behold, the servant said, There is in this city a man of God. And the Bible calls him an honorable man. All that he saith co surely comes to pass. Now, let us go thither. Per adventure, he can show us our way that we should go. Verse 7. And Saul said to his servant, But behold, if we go, what shall we bring to the man? For the bread is spent in our vessel, and there is not a present to bring to the man of God. What have we? That was a limitation. He said, listen, listen, if, if this man has that level of credibility, then it must have come through deep interaction with the spirit. And we should be able to carry something that represents an expression of honor. And then Saul said to his servant, but behold, if we go, go to verse 8, please. Verse 8. And the servant answered Saul again and said, Behold, I have here at hand a fourth part of a shekel of silver and I will give to the man to tell us our way. And that, that became what they had and they left. And you know the rest. Through that honor as they got there, before he would even arrive, to tell, let me tell you this, look up please. No genuine man of God who has been helped by God and is determined to do ministry with integrity will sit down and pressure people over their resources. Do you know that while they got to the gate of Samaria, as soon as they saw Samuel, he did not look at their hand. He said, go up and I will tell you what is in your heart. It was not about the seed. It was about honor to give him access. Hallelujah. There are many, many people who are very greedy and very stingy. They can go to men of God. Men of God will pray for them, do everything, even feed them and give them money. And some of them are very wealthy people. You see, and they, they cannot, the, 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 the law of honor, they don't practice it. It's wrong. It's not about me. I'm not saying you should give me money. Believe me. But I'm telling you that it is a principle, learn it as a spiritual principle. You want to provoke the grace upon an anointed vessel, have the discernment to always honor. There are people who want to go and see politicians. You are not even sure of what they will tell you. 
Some of them will buy a car. Some of them will buy a house and say, I have five estates. Uh, honorable, I just thought that, uh, uh, let me just give you a recharge card. And the recharge card is one estate. And they come to a church and they see the church struggling. And yet the man is anointed. Nothing to be ashamed of. He's growing. And they know that with, with a simple check, and it will not mean anything to them. There are people who can build churches, 10 churches at a go, and it will not scratch their, their finances. And yet they will come and meet a man of God and say, I hope you have time because I, my problem, I need one hour. And the man says, okay, I'm listening to you. Oh, am I going to do this? He says, go. Am I going to? And then they go and get blessed and they say, thank you. And they spend their money on psychophants and ignore those that were used by God to bless them. There is a balance. While on one hand, the assignment of, not, of priesthood is not tax collection. We are not there sent by God to be collecting money from people. But I have to educate you as touching doctrine. Make it a principle and a point of duty that as much as God grants you grace, do not go and see a man of God with a proven track record who you trust the investment of the spirit upon his life empty handed. It is spiritual carelessness. I never, God is my witness. I have never and I will never go and meet any of the fathers of faith and just go and meet them and say, even if I stumble across them by mistake, I will not do that it is not human worship you don't know what leaves the spirit of people when they are happy go and ask Isaac why will Isaac I hope you know that the 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 goat or the ram that they caught was Isaac's own from his farm that he ate so he already had it but he said go leave the one in my house go let it let it let it compel something from you make venice such as I love Bring it to me. I want to bless you. Let me tell you the truth. As much as I don't, I'm not really into, you know, money, money, all of these things. It's not, it's none of my business. With I don't put people on, under pressure. But I tell you the truth by God. There are sacrifices and there are things that people have done for me. I have found myself, even to my surprise, blessing them and prophesying to them from the depth of my heart and subconsciously paying attention to their needs as busy as i am you see I'm, I'm i'm being sincere and honest with you i love everybody but you'll be making a mistake believing i give everybody equal attention it's not even something that i plan there are people because of the depth of their honor their sacrifice from their heart there are families that if they call on me even if it is in tears i will get up and make sure i respond to them because of the level of spiritual sacrifice it is the same thing with us men of god everybody can call on god but it looks like god is hearing others and not hearing others the key is sacrifice i will be lying to you if i don't teach you this Native doctors will not even hear you. Go out. When you, your trouble really hits you, you will look for what to buy and bring for me. But in the church, we don't do that. But believers are becoming careless just because we are pointing imbalances here. I will not tell you what I'm not doing. In fact, as a principle, I will never stand up and go to any family, even if it's a family that looks up to me. It is a principle to always greet people at the gates with honor. Some of you, even your children, this law of honor has not worked in your life. You will go to a restaurant holding three children. They will stand outside while you are eating. You will finish and carry extra water and say, hey, let's go. This law of honor must, must work in you. In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. I will be disappointed if you have been in Koinonia and you claim to be connected here. And you have, I'm not saying to me, I wish I were not the one preaching this. You see, it's very difficult to tell the truth of this sort, especially if you are the one who is, is, you know, you are saying it in your own platform. But I ought to tell you the truth. When your hands are close to honor, your destiny will be close to access. Honor. You want to receive from prophetic vessels? If you do not find them worthy of your attention, then leave them in peace. But for as long as you are determined to engage them, respect what they represent and honor your way into the deepest bowels of the prophetic. 
Number three, faith. Three rules of engagement from receiving from prophetic vessels. Number one, discernment. Number two, honor. Number three, faith. Faith means you have to believe that God is able to use them to speak to you. Second Chronicles 2020, we're wrapping up. 2020, Second Chronicles. They rose up early in the morning and they went into the wilderness of Tekoa. The Bible says, and as they went forth, Jehoshaphat stood and said, Hear me, old Koinonia, and ye inhabitants of Jerusalem. He says, Believe in the Lord your God, so shall ye be established. Then believe. He didn't just say, Listen, believe his prophets, so shall you prosper. In John chapter 2, from verse 5, John chapter 2, from verse 5. The Bible says the wedding in Cana now, wine had finished and they all came to Jesus and the mother told them, he said, whatsoever he saith unto you, do it. Verse 6, now he begins to speak, reading to 8, and there were set six water pots of stone after the manner of the purifying of the Jews containing two or three frackings apiece. 7, Jesus said unto them, fill the water pots you want to see a miracle take a step of faith by believing in my word fill the water pots with water ladies and gentlemen that was a huge risk and they filled them up to the brim obedience faith verse 8 now he takes it deeper he says now draw out as at the time you are drawing out what you are seeing is water but bear it and take the risk at my word be on your way to go to the governor do you know they will kill those people if that water did not turn to wine? You know in those days they didn't forgive. Straight, they would just hang them or kill them or do all kinds of things. I'm sure those guys were moving and saying, what is this now? We came for reception, a wedding that is not even our own. This guy is now leading us to go and die for nothing. Listen to me. Whether you are Naaman or you are the one in need of an embarrassment to be averted from your wedding, the moment you come to a prophetic vessel, be ready to hear instruction and be ready to act. There are times I have come here to give us prophetic instructions to fast, to sow, to listen. And there are many people who have embraced it as touching the voice of God. Some of you here with simplicity of heart and meekness have received this prophetic voice as touching the grace of God and you have seen what it has happened but there are people who are too intellectual or too scientific or too rich or too wise in their own understanding you see when you are flying a plane you have to depend on the intelligence of the captain and the crew you are not at liberty as 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 gigantic as that plane or that ship is there is only one man that controls that flight and sometimes he can tell you we're about to approach turbulence so make sure you put on your seat belt please minimize any other thing if you are distributing food stop for the moment he knows what he's saying it is for you to believe sometimes even a minute or two after he's spoken you will not sense any bump and then all of a sudden it becomes bumpy because by reason of being pilot he has the privilege of sight and the privilege of all kinds of things within the cockpit there and you know that can help to direct him you are following and so you listen Africa hear me as much as we are trusting God to correct some of the sad things that are happening with the prophetic let us be careful so that we do not make the mistake of the West let us be careful so that we do not make the mistake of the East westernization made many people in the West and in Europe to crucify their prophets they came up with a point where they felt john knox what can you say em bounds what can you say charles g finney what can you say we have a government we have economists we have intellectuals and right now some of those regions are nationally barren of prophetic voices there are regions in the earth where there are no prophetic and apostolic voices because the people made it they sowed the seed of killing and destroying the prophetic Africa, I understand that many lives have been wrecked because of the mismanagement of the prophetic. I understand. I know that there are many people who have risen to communicate the prophetic 
barren of integrity. God is helping all of us. But I can tell you, this is a clarion call to Africa. We need to be careful. Nigeria, we need to be careful. Do not destroy your prophets. It is a trap. You owe it to pray for the prophets and pray for purity of grace, purity of perception, purity of character and truthfulness in serving God. But can I tell you, a nation, a church, a region that shuts down is prophetic has shut down a major advantage in their lives. I am a product of the prophetic. The fathers of faith have spoken over my life. I have watched the prophetic through my life lift and raise many people. And chiefest of all, we are saved by the word. We are transformed by the word. The word of God said it, that if we pay attention to this, we will be transformed. We believed in that prophetic truth. Look what our lives have become. We are about to pray. Because by this time tomorrow, for someone in the name of Jesus, for someone it is a literal tomorrow, for someone it's a prophetic tomorrow, meaning the seasons that you have left. Forget about what has gone wrong. Please rise up on your feet. We're about to pray. Just a few minutes, let's minimize moving up and down. We just have a few minutes and we're done. Two prayer points tonight. Prayer point number one, from the depth of your heart, I'd like you to pray and cry unto God and say, Father, I open up my heart to the prophetic as a system of advantage for my lifting, for my rising, for my dominion and for my excelling. Open up your mouth and pray. I open up my spirit. I open up my spirit to the prophetic dimension. I believe in the power of the prophetic. First, the prophecy of scripture being the most sure word of prophecy. We live by the word. It is by the word we are built. It is by the word we are established. Someone pray. I contend for that prophetic dimension that comes with the word. If someone pray, let it be from the depth of your heart. Please, no looking around your eyes on Jesus and you pray. I open up my spirit to the prophetic. The prophetic, the more sure word of prophecy, and then anointed vessels as God has placed in my life with integrity and with honor to the word of God. Go ahead and pray. Lord, we open up our hearts to the prophetic, the prophetic office and the operation of the prophetic. Hallelujah. Now, before I speak over your life and I want you to be patient and receive it. Number two, we are going to pray for the prophetic office ministry and the prophetic generally in Nigeria and Africa particularly. We owe a responsibility to pray and say, Lord, we declare number one, redemption. Number two, restoration. Number three, glorification of the prophetic. That every area of lapse and corruption and flesh, we declare that it be pruned out by the dealings of God. Are we together now? That God will raise in every region genuine prophetic and apostolic voices in your family in your church in every region that would dispense the prophetic with character with dignity with balance all the games that surround the prophetic let's drive it out of the body of christ in prayer all the imbalances and all the, the nonsense that you know the baggages that have come with flesh in administering the prophetic let's pray the mercy of god please open your mouth and pray Pray for men and women of God in Nigeria. Pray for men and women of God in Africa. Pray for men and women of God in Europe. Pray for men and women of God in America, Australia, everywhere your mind can take you to pray. Lord, sustain the prophetic. Sustain the revelatory dimension of the prophetic. Sustain the creative dimension of the prophetic. Let destinies not be aborted because of dishonor to the prophetic. 
let confusion not remain in your body because of dishonor to the prophetic let darkness not fall upon us without eyes that see and warn without ears that hear and warn because of our pride in persecuting those you have gifted with grace pray lord we pray for pruning let there be judgment and pruning among the prophetic and the apostolic in nigeria in africa walk on the character of men and women they that bear the vessels of the lord in the name of jesus christ prune out every flesh the lust of the flesh the lust of the eyes the pride of life childishness immaturity the mix of the prophetic with various shades of divination and extra biblical practices take it out of your body oh god but by all means preserve the prophetic by all means oh god and for your name's sake preserve the prophetic hallelujah my final word to the body of Christ, please hear me. There is no man of God and no woman of God, especially one called into the prophetic and the apostolic who should outgrow training. Let me repeat myself. Many of the nonsense that we experience in the body of Christ, sometimes it is not an issue of sin. It's just an issue of childishness. Are we together? If you were a man and a woman of God listening to me following by way of rebroadcast or you are here, let me challenge you. No matter what height you attain, please humble yourself to learn. Learn at the feet of those who know what they are doing. Let me tell you the, the major problem with Africa. In many African regions, the apostolic voices that speak as fathers are still young people. And we salute them for their diligence to rise. But you see, nations need fathers and fathers indeed. A combination of experience and the length of years working with God. The Bible says, woe unto any nation whose king is a child. I'm not being sarcastic. We have, we've already acknowledged the great ministries in this nation and across. There are many ministries that are led by children. Not just children in age, but children in mind. And some of these excesses are purely products of immaturity. Gifted people, but no character and emotional stability and maturity. So we keep, we, we desecrate the altar and bring reproach to the body of Christ because of lack of maturity. We must trust God for grace, for stability. Are we together? Stability in character as we dispense the prophetic. You are prophesying to people go and find out the rules of prophesying to people don't just say i saw and you call someone and you are describing explicit things in the presence of people you know what i'm talking about you are describing things that a ma this one is not the issue of sin it's about training and maturity there are rules to prophesying you don't just say everything you are seeing no the spirit of a prophet is subject to the prophet Anything you are going to say that does not translate to edification and comfort, you can hide it, see the people privately. And then this God of mammon, bring money and I prophesy. May God deliver us in the name of Jesus. And then for us too, as men of God open up themselves, including me to speak to you, as much as you love and respect us, make sure that you trust God for grace as much as possible don't idolize the prophetic the prophetic is not jesus the prophetic is a system of advantage that reveals jesus when you place your faith entirely in the prophetic you are an idol worshiper even if it's genuine prophetic our faith should be on jesus the bible calls jesus not the prophetic the author and the finisher of our faith are we together now let me speak over your life you don't have to kneel or stand just believe I've been commanded to bless and he has granted grace and I want you to believe believe we have been commanded to bless I've told you what it does we can take advantage of time 
and program spiritual possibilities i decree and declare in the name of jesus for as many who will believe as many whose hearts will be open between now and december 31st may my god give you a reason to laugh may my god give you a reason to laugh may my god give you a reason to laugh number two every long-standing issue that has been around your life and your family and has refused to bow to the name of the Lord I'm declaring some of you in a matter of days that situation comes to an end number three please receive this one I want to speak over your finances I truly got up this morning and I was concerned and burdened in my heart there are many people right now who are dying of high blood pressure they love the Lord pastors individual but this money thing there are people who are already at the corridors of compromise because of tea and bread business did not seem to work this year there are couples that are about to tear apart right now and it's because of money let me speak over your life in the name that is above all names hear me anyone here who is in any financial condition that is for shame and for reproach in the name of Jesus come out of it now by the ministry of destiny help us come out of it now I speak to every family here that all you have seen in your family is crying and languishing in the name that is above all names I open you up to a season of laughter there are family members that have not seen eyeball to eyeball in the name of Jesus may the reconciler in this season bring reconciliation hear me I am led to specially I'm sensing in my spirit now to pray for couples that have been far apart either because of visa issues someone husband is in America wife is in Nigeria for four years they've not seen themselves they've not seen their children in the name of Jesus if there is anyone like that under the sound of my voice I declare supernaturally may the Lord bring connection anyone here carrying the cause of death you are already seeing dead people in your dreams you are already having all kinds of demonic destructive things listen listen hold on please my apologies for taking your time do you know in the last three weeks one of the case the case that I've seen that in my email and text messages is people having breathing problems somebody just gets up and we're not talking COVID though you can't breathe again let me pray for someone if there is any manifestation of the spirit of death translating to any cardiovascular disease to cut short your life I decree and declare be free from it now koinonia hear me your sleep is not for death you will not die in your sleep your travel is not for death you will not die on the road please help them the prophetic every hand that has been brought down in shame and you are saying Lord will I remain like this prophetically I hold your hand I lift it up may it remain lifted forever anyone here having a court case or any legal issue that is about to eat up your family by all means I prophesy favor and mercy for you yes. hallelujah anyone here called barren that your womb has refused to take in 
I don't care what the medical condition is. In the name of Jesus Christ, by the power of the Holy Spirit, I speak over you. Between now and the end of this year, may a miracle start in your life. Please be patient. I don't know who has forgotten you and because they forgot you all kinds of needless hardship some of you are surrounded by people that if they were led by God to remember you the truth is that shame will be rolled away from your life any spirit that has made them forget you in the name of Jesus right now I open the book of remembrance And for any one of you who has misused opportunities that were once opened because of carelessness and now that door is closed, I prophesy restoration for you. Please hear me. Any altar and any coven and any shrine carrying anybody's name or any family to say you will not rise that in this December for you it will be tears while others are laughing I call upon my God in the name of Jesus and by the power of prophecy may that altar catch fire now <laughs> hallelujah two more speakings and we're done hear me there is a spirit that always leads men to trouble. You get up in the morning in peace. You will just go somewhere you are not supposed to go. And you just see police come and they say, everybody here, just go to the police station. Why? When you get there, it will tell you. Can I tell you the truth? It says, lead us not into temptation. Is that in your Bible? Lead us not into temptation. I know people who were minding their business. Someone came and said, let me introduce you to one business somewhere. They didn't know it was fraud. They sincerely just came because they wanted to make meaning. Right now, they are in trouble. Anything that is a temptation, anything that is the devil directing you to put you in trouble, right now, make a U-turn spiritually. Make a U-turn spiritually. Hear me? Every transaction, every connection, every fraternity with troublemakers that can implicate you legally, can implicate you spiritually, can bring reproach to your name and your family. May my God take you far from it. Yeah. Hallelujah. The final prayer now that I pray for you. I'm praying whether you have children or not anybody under your care is your child can i tell you you will not use your money to manage evil yeah. there are people just when families are ready to rise you will hear that their child is in police station you will hear that someone is sick you heard the story of i think someone the lady who was healed here i know a bit about these kidney things and let me tell you when you have a loved one that has a kidney situation be ready to put between 10 to at least 15 million to manage them and that not even with a guarantee they will survive i'm saying it again every trap of the enemy to bring joy and sadness to your family to your life to your children let it be averted finally right now for some of you it is with your own eyes your own ears and your own mind god will use to prophesy to you <laughs> it will not even be another prophet you will go to lie down and what you wanted to meet someone to show you my god will show you using your own faculties me some of you you will be praying and the spirit of prophecy will come on you and you will start prophesying when you are done praying you will see that that prophecy was for you let me add one more prayer there are some of you who truly need an encounter with human vessels you have encountered the prophecy of scripture but you have been afraid because there are all kinds of people playing gimmicks i want to pray a special prayer for you the prophetic voice that god needs to lead you to 
so that you will hear to give you accuracy and precision i call upon god between now and the end of december i connect you to that prophetic voice shout a loud amen i connect you to that prophetic voice listen Ladies and gentlemen, I can tell you this for free. The day you actually encounter a man that God has helped with the prophetic, with character to help you and give you perspective, in five minutes, the confusion of 10, 20, 50 years, the blueprint of your destiny can be opened like you open a room that has been locked for a long time. I'm saying it one last time. You don't need to meet everybody. You have been meeting people not sent to you, even though they are accurate. He said there were many widows in Zarephath, but to none was Elijah sent. Just because a man can prophesy does not mean he's sent to you. In the name of Jesus, even if it's momentarily, I don't know what prophetic voice has been sent to bring perspective and direction and rest to your life. Find them now. Find them now. Find them now. Find them now. And if there is anyone who prophesied upon you, and that prophecy is not accurate yet you have been acting upon that inaccuracy and is torturing and destroying your life in the name of jesus i release you from the effect of it now <laughs> wave your hands to jesus and thank him for tonight's service by this time tomorrow you return with a testimony like the prophet over samaria and in the name of Jesus, before I make the altar call, Nigeria will prophesy to you by this time tomorrow. Tomorrow here may not just mean physical tomorrow, but we speak over the tomorrow of Nigeria. We prophesy in Nigeria where national shame and reproach is rolled away. Apostle, I need Jesus and I need him right now. I cannot say for sure that I'm walking with God. Please keep standing. We're wrapping up. Apostle, as I'm standing here hearing you, I can truly say that I need Jesus. Please lend me your attention. There are two groups of people right now I want to call. Those who are saying there is nothing to hide. I want to come and surrender genuinely to Jesus. There are others who are saying, I've given my heart to the Lord, but right now I, things have gone, my life is scattered, I need direction. I'm going to count one to five without any shame and any sense of inferiority. I want you to come and stand right in front here. You know that you want to make it right with Jesus. God bless you as you come. One, Koinonia, let's honor them. Carry your bags, your Bibles, and whatever you came with and please walk to the front two the moment i count five i'll begin to pray please if you're coming hasten your your steps keep clapping koinonia let's encourage them three your bags your bibles everything you came with come and make it right with jesus the captain of your salvation the prophet of prophets four Apostle, I remember getting saved, but I'm not sure. You can be sure. Join them. Join them. You can be sure. You can make it right. And those who are following online, here's your chance to make Jesus Lord of your life. All our overflows, please move to your LED screens outside. Move to your screens. Jesus is giving you a new beginning right now. What an honor to lead you to his majesty tonight. Five. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for making this bold decision. Please, you're joining them. Come very quickly. Hallelujah. Thank you. Thank you. The Bible says, as many who will come to him, he will in no wise cast away. Please lift your right hand, may I request, as a sign of surrender to heaven. And say this after me loud and clear. Please, you're joining them. Join quickly. When you come after the prayer, someone would have to lead you to pray that prayer. Say, Lord Jesus. One more time. Say, Lord Jesus. Tonight... I have heard your word. I believe that you died for me. I believe that you rose again for my justification. Right now, I receive Jesus into my heart 
as my Savior, as my Lord, and as my King, I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken over my life. From tonight until forever, I am a child of God, washed by the blood of the Lamb. Amen. Keep your hands lifted. Father, thank you for these precious ones, the many who are following us online and all the overflows. In the name of Jesus, by the integrity of God's word, I declare your sins forgiven and I declare that the power of sin, Satan, hell and the grave is broken over your life. I release you from every guilt and shame and I declare that from tonight it is a new beginning for you. You go forward ever and backward never. In Jesus much less name we pray. Amen and amen. Please let me request that you all move very briefly to my right which will be your left. There are counselors ready to receive you. They'll have a word with you very briefly. It will be very brief I promise you and then you'll be back. Let's celebrate them as they go. Is this the best you can do, Koinonia? Celebrate them as they go. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise the name of the Lord. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.